on a Sunday morning, March 6, 1836, David Crockett made his now famous last stand and fell as a hero of the Alamo. We know that fact, but what has evaded historians and Texans is precisely how David Crockett, an Alamo defender from Tennessee, met his final moments. There are about as many thoughts and ideas about Crockett's final moments at that battle as there are movies produced about David Crockett at the Alamo. Interestingly, each movie has presented a different scenario of Crockett's last heroic stand at the famous battle. Welcome to TVC History. My name is Alex Andrew. I'm your host and history ambassador. And today, we have to talk about David Crockett, arguably the most iconic and well-known Alamo defender, and his last stand at the Alamo during our Texas Revolution. Join me today as I present several widely known and accepted last stand scenarios in our video presentation entitled Crockett's Last Stand. But first, let me welcome you if this is your first time on our TBC page. You're at the right place if you love Texas revolutionary history. We're glad you're here. So please hit the like and subscribe buttons and become part of our family. Additionally, if you don't want to miss out on any future videos, hit the bell notification button right now so you can catch all our stories. And finally, support our page and efforts by purchasing your copy of our book, Tejana Volunteer Company, Stories of Our Texas Revolution by J.L. Gonzalez, available on Kindle, paperback, and hardcover. Now let's get back to our presentation. David Crockett was an American folk hero, frontiersman, soldier, and politician. In popular culture, he is often called the king of the wild frontier. He represented Tennessee in the United States House of Representatives and served in the Texas Revolution. Crockett grew up in East Tennessee, where he gained a reputation for hunting and storytelling. He was made a colonel in the militia of Lawrence County, Tennessee, and was elected to the Tennessee State Legislature in 1821. In 1827, he was elected to the United States Congress, where he vehemently opposed many of the policies of President Andrew Jackson, especially the Indian Removal Act. Crockett's opposition to Jackson's policies led to his defeat in the 1831 elections. He was re-elected in 1833, then narrowly lost in 1835, prompting his angry departure to Texas shortly after that. At that time, Texas was a Mexican state known as Tejas. David's famous quote personify his sentiments regarding his loss for that congressional seat. You can all go to hell. I'm going to Texas. History remembers that on February 8, 1836, Crockett arrived in San Antonio to Bear, accompanied by the Tennessee Mounted Volunteers. Soon after his arrival, Santa Ana and the entire Mexican Army Vanguard came to San Antonio to lay siege on that old adobe fort. In early 1836, Crockett participated in the Battle of the Alamo. He made his last stand in that revolutionary struggle, either bravely fighting until the end, swinging old Betsy by the barrel or he was ordered to be executed by Santa Ana, leader of the Mexican army. Or another version because we really don't know. History has recorded several examples of how David fell at that famous battle. Let's look at several of the more widely accepted accounts, depicting Crockett's final moments at the Alamo. An hour after the initial attack, David Crockett stands alone in the chapel, proudly and tenaciously defending his diminished position. First, a horrible gash bleeds down his forehead. Then, holding the barrel of his shattered rifle in his right hand, and a bowie blade in his left, Crockett faces his attackers with the courage of a lion. Twenty dead or dying Mexicans heaped around his buckskin-clad feet. The man from Tennessee crouches, daring his attackers to take him. But instead, they move in for the kill, and his fight ends. David falls at the Alamo. History remembers that one of the first official reports of the Alamo came from General Sam Houston. Houston wrote the following in a dispatch to Colonel Fannin, the commander at Goliad, on March 11, 1836. Houston's dispatch read, After the fort was carried, seven men surrendered and called for Santa Ana and a quarter. His order murdered them. Houston doesn't name Crockett by name, but his report reveals from the beginning that officials knew a group of Alamo defenders had surrendered. Here's one of the first news reports on mass media of that time, appearing in the Morning Courier and New York Enquirer, several months after the fall of the Alamo on July 9, 1836. Six Americans were discovered near the wall yet unconquered. Finally, they were surrounded and ordered by General Castrian to surrender, which they did under a promise of protection. One of the six stepped forward with a bold demeanor, 
The troops noticed his firmness and his noble bearing. An undaunted David Crockett from Tennessee boldly faced General Santa Anna, looking him steadfastly in the face. Sir, here are six prisoners I have taken alive. How shall I dispose of them? Manuel Fernandez asked his commander. Santa Anna looked fiercely at Castrian, replying, Have I not told you how to dispose of them before? Why do you bring them to me? Several junior officers unsheathed their swords and lunged at Crockett and the others, plunging their swords into the bosoms of their defenseless prisoners. One of Santa Anna's officers, a young lieutenant who fought in the Battle of the Alamo as part of the Toluca Battalion and was an aide to its commander, Colonel Francisco Duque, witnessed this historical event and wrote in his diary the following scenario of Crockett's last stand. Some seven men had survived the general carnage, and under the protection of General Castrian, they were brought before Santa Ana. Among them was the naturalist David Crockett, well known in North America for his unusual adventures. Santa Ana answered Castrian's intervention on Crockett's behalf with a gesture of indignation and, addressing troops closest to him, ordered the execution of the man from Tennessee. The officer corps was outraged at this action and did not support the order, but loyalists thrust themselves forward and blades gleaming fell upon the unfortunate, defenseless men. Though tortured before they were killed, these unfortunates died without complaining and humiliating themselves before their executioners. James Shackford may have perfectly surmised it in his 1956 book, David Crockett. Here's a quote from his book. Too much has been made about how David died at the Alamo. Such details are not necessary. What is important is that he died as he had lived. Crockett's life was one of indomitable bravery. His death was a death of fearless courage. David's life was one of wholehearted dedication to his concepts of liberty. He died staking his life against what he regarded as intolerable tyranny. It is said that David Crockett lived life on his terms. Texas was fortunate to have David from Tennessee, the Lion of the West. Today and forever, Texans will never forget our hero from Tennessee, David Crockett. David Crockett was a true patriot of our Texas Revolution. Thank you, David. You will always live in our hearts. Thank you for being with us today and allowing us to bring you this video presentation entitled Crockett's Last Stand. I'm Alex Andrew with TDC History. Thanks for watching and remember, Texas heroes, never forget.